Cypriot from FU4. And today we'll talk about a question that I hear all the time. What is uh, nonlinear simulation? And what is the difference between linear and nonlinear? Should I be using nonlinear simulation? Well, to answer this question, you need to understand what uh, linearity means and what's the concept of, uh, what is the concept behind uh, this linearity thing? So when you say, okay, I'm, I'm doing a linear simulation, which is by the way, like 90% of uh, the simulations that everyone is doing every day, uh, linear simulation refers basically to a relation of proportionality. So when you do a simple simulation with a force applied somewhere on your model, um, and you obtain some results, so let's say a displacement, deformations of your uh, model, uh, if your simulation is a linear simulation, well, you can just say, okay, I multiply by force by two, I will get uh, my results multiplied by two as well. So there is this proportionality between the, the, the force you put at the, on the model and the results you obtain. And why do you get this kind of proportionality uh, relation? Because this basically means that you can do one simulation and then you can just uh, obtain the result from a lot of uh, values by just multiplying the force. Instead of doing 10 simulation, you can just multiply by 10 uh, different uh, factors, right? Uh, well, why does this happen? Well, this happens because when we do a linear simulation, we'll, we are making a few uh, assumptions on the material uh, that we're using, and especially on the material model that is used to um, to approximate the real material model uh, that is, uh, you know, available in the in our real world. Uh, in the real world, the material uh, is, you know, it's inf if you dive infinitely small inside the structure of a material, you will discover a lot of uh, different imperfections in all directions. It's never something which is really smooth and uh, the same in all directions. But what we're doing as an assumption is that you take a cube, for example, of, uh, of steel. We will not say, okay, uh, the, when I, I use this material, I need to take account of all the, the various microstructure of the steel. This is much too complicated. So what we, we do is, um, and this comes from mechanics, uh, basically, we just say, okay, what is the material? Material is what gives me the relation between uh, stress and strain. So I basically deform, I, I apply a certain stress, a force uh, to my material. My material deforms uh, under this uh, stress. So this is the strain. The strain is the deformation. The stress is the force. And we need to find a relation between those two. And the material gives me this relation between the stress and the strain. So the um, this material model for a linear simulation is the simplest type of material model that you can find. It's basically say, okay, the stress and strain are uh, linearly related. So you have a matrix basically, and you multiply by, when you multiply by the stress or by the strain, you get the stress. And so this is some kind of proportionality relation that links those two parameters. And in order to obtain this relation, you basically just need two parameters for a linear simulation, which is the Young's models and the Poisson's ratio. And that's why when you define an elastic material, you have only two parameters to define, uh, which is the Young's models and the Poisson's ratio. And then if you want the gravity, you have also the density of the material to define, but uh, generally it's just two parameters. So with two parameters, you can define an elastic material and we do several assumptions also on that in order to get this linear uh, model is that we are staying in small deformations, so very small deformations, and we are, um, we are keeping this, um, what do you say? Uh, it's called isotropy of the material, which means that if you apply a force on the left or you apply a force on the right or on the top, it will always deform in the same way. So it's uh, this, it's isotropic, it deforms the same way in every direction. So those two assumptions make that, okay, I have a linear material and I have a simple linear relation between stress and strain. And when I have that, 
I can extrapolate and obtain a simulation which will give me um, uh, some linearly related results. So, um, when can I say, okay, I, um, I want to do linear simulation or I want to do a nonlinear simulation? Well, it all depends what you uh, want to do with your simulation and your results. Uh, if, let's say, you're a designer and uh, you want to, let's say, you are comparing different uh, designs. Um, and your purpose is just to see how your design is uh, competing against another design. Uh, you don't want to, let's say, apply a force so huge to your design so that you see how it breaks. This is not the purpose. The purpose is really to say, okay, I apply a force, uh, I get some results. Will, ha will I have a safety factor that will show um, that this model is absolutely unsafe at some precise location? Uh, if you get that, obviously there's something very wrong with your simulation, so that's not what you're supposed to get. You're supposed to get, okay, uh, results are you know, mostly fine everywhere, which means I have small displacements uh, everywhere in your model. And, and then when you get the model like that, you can compare with another design and you can say, okay, look, these designs will make things a bit worse for my uh, model. I will get more stress in this area. Uh, than in, uh, in another area. Uh, and basically linear uh, static simulation helps you to do that um, because it's pretty easy and uh, it's quick to solve a model because it's just one iteration. You just apply, you solve and you get the results. Um, so when do you use nonlinear simulation? You use it when you're actually interested to see the your design under heavy stress and large deformation. So you want to see how it actually breaks. So if you want to study the breakpoint, let's say, when you, you want to apply a huge force to it and make sure that it deforms and it breaks and uh, you, you, you want to see how it actually deforms, um, then you need nonlinear simulation. And actually things become pretty complicated because uh, in nonlinear simulation, you have to take account of several different types of nonlinearity. You have large deformation, you have nonlinear material, uh, you have nonlinear contacts, maybe. And um, when you have all of, all of those three parameters, making your simulation converge toward a good result and obtain something that is reasonable and uh, uh, and really giving you, gives you something close to experiments is very difficult because you have to have a lot of uh, experience in the type of nonlinear material model that is to be used, the type of material, uh, the stress strain relation that is to be applied to your model, um, you know, the type of nonlinear uh, deformations, um, the, the, the type how to model the contacts with or without friction. Um, and you know all those things are together are making the, that it becomes pretty complicated, and you need to have um, a very strong understanding of the engineering behind this. Uh, what is happening? And you know, I think uh, I already told a lot about all this. So uh, I hope it was interesting, and that you understand now the difference between linear and nonlinear, and also material model maybe. Uh, and if there's anything else you want to uh, understand like that, um, you know, please let me know in the comments. Uh, it'll be a pleasure to, uh, to make another video to explain about those topics.